Good morning, afternoon, or evening. For the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings, and welcome to Roll Call, a look into the regiments that help make up this thing we call Foxhole, in the regiment's own words. Today I'm joined by Noir of the Blue Roses Regiment, known by their BR tag. And you know, let's get straight to it. Um, yeah, what's, uh, what's your role within the regiment here? You uh, leadership uh, in some capacity? Uh, yeah, I'm the one and only uh, leader in the Blue Rose, except my officer. Uh, what's the story behind the Blue Roses name? It's a very, uh, very lovely imagery there. What's the story behind it? So when I was a new, well, kind of a new player, I was an officer in the the Blue Army, a clan called Blue Army, right now known as the SSE. Before it uh, changed into, it was the Blue Army. Wait, so are they? So is it just, now the Sapphire Sentinels? Yeah, it is the Sapphire Sentinels. I was oh, okay. So it's an offshoot of Sapphire Sentinels. Yes. Oh. Huh. It it yeah it went through a, a name change. And uh, I was an officer there, and then I left the clan uh, to get my own, to get my own, and then I was like, "What should I name it?" And then I just edited the Blue Army a little to make it Blue Rose. That's the, basically the most basic thing, like the how that story happened. Any reason for the roses in particular, as opposed to petunias? No, no, not really. Just BR sounded sounded better. Yeah. So, about when was your regiment's founding? When did you break off from the from the, from the Sentinels? Uh, I broke off from the Sentinels like two years ago, maybe one and a half. Probably like between one and a half and two, and then uh, I got my own regiment mm-hmm. in the War Fort. Like we started to act like a regiment in War Forty Five, but. Uh, before that, I was handling the clan itself, like designing it and stuff. In the trench update, we formed. So it was around the trench update uh, is when when the Blue Roses was was founded, kind of officially. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, a lot of regiments I'm finding are, are, are come out of there, and no surprise because that was a big one for sure. Now I'm sure uh, the Blue Roses are made up from members from across the globe, but what nationalities make up the majority of the regiment? Would you say? Uh, I have absolutely no idea. Like we have, <laughs> I haven't been keeping tabs on anyone, everyone's nationality. Like sure. we have Italians, we have French, we have Americans, we have most Europe, we have Russians, we have Asians. Yeah, we have a, basically everyone around the globe. Sure, and so like, what time zones do you, do you operate in mostly? Is it kind of uh, all GM- over? Say, say again. GMT, GMT mostly. Oh, okay, so usually European time, it seems. Yep. That's about when uh, most of the. I, I know there's insomniacs all over the all over this this game we call Foxhole, yeah. but um, GMT is around mostly there. So yeah, how how many people make up Blue Roses? About like the not uh, not just who you can fit in the game, but also like just in general the the BR community. Oh, uh, currently we have three hundred and forty five in the Discord, but we have uh, two hundred soldiers. Sure, one total. Yeah, of course. You know, Discord. Discord's a uh, it's a it's a good uh, metric to have, but uh, might might be like for instance, I'm included in that number since I'm in the Discord. But, no, uh, you're not because uh, I I you know I have subtracted that. I subtracted allies. You know, nudes. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Anyone that yeah, yeah yeah that's the exact number. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, how about fieldable manpower? So like, uh, how many in a in a typical BR session, aside from just the random. You know, get-togethers. What, what's like the usual fieldable manpower for a for a BR operation? Uh, maximum thirty and minimum ten. Mm. So, do you find yourself fighting the queues a lot? Uh, yes and no, because of the other clans doing operations in those areas sometimes. Sure. So, what are the what would you say is the primary doctrine and style of Blue Rose? Is the main thing that BR uh, does out in the battlefield? Uh, so, since we don't have a lot of numbers like AT to the K, K, KGG, or any other clan that has mass amount of people, mm. we we do operations based on basically anything that can be achieved by minimum manpower. Is stuff like 
uh, partisaning, tanking, but like, we tank, we do tanking, but in a way that we just hit the enemy lines that there like there's no activity and enemy like there's the front line right, mm -hmm. and then on that front line there's a inactive part of it that no one is defending. We just hit it, and when the QRF comes, we just fall back and hit the other one, you know, harassing the line of itself. Yeah, so like harassment, commando operations, just kind of hit and run tactics on the weak part of the lines or the inattentive part of the lines, it seems. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Th I mean, hey, honestly, that's called finding the niche. And that's, that can be very, very effective. In fact, oftentimes, um, I know when people, people who often find those flanks, the wide flanks, I'm not talking about, you know, like, oh, 50 meters around the main yeah. battle, which is just another battle going on. But no, this is this is like, hey, this is a region that is low pop and uh, people are hitting it. Usually you'll find a lot of people find gratification there. Would you say you find a lot of successful, a lot of success in those hit and run tactics? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, what kind of, so like yeah. a, a success, maybe not capturing a town, but maybe like causing damage? Uh, yeah, yeah. For example, yesterday... In Deadlands, we did uh, an APC with all RPGs on it, and we, there was like EATs, but un unmanned in the pits. So we just hit them, and then fall back, and then uh, QRF comes with I setting up ISGs, and then we hit the right side after that, because the left side is right now QRF. That's what happened yesterday, for example. You know, uh, certainly finding the flank is probably the most, it's, it's one yeah. of the keys to victory I have found. And I've heard from many, from many leaders that finding the flank, not just butting your head against the, against the, 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 the front gate usually leads to some better degree of success than others. Yeah. Also, well, yesterday after they knew our, after they like saw what we were doing, Mm. Uh, well, they got a wise, and every single rifle gear is had ISGs on them. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with, with, a, with a box next to it filled with ammunition, I'm pretty sure. It's good to know that uh, at least your enemy is adaptive. They're actually listening. Yeah, they're actually listening, and we have to change it again. And it we can't even use suppression. Yeah, we can't use suppression tactics with the FMG because they recently got the EAT and uh, they there are some of their rifle gears and anti tank gears as well. Mm -hmm. So we got in a bit unorthodox because when you sh when you lower the ramp in the APC, the mm -hmm. enemy anti tank gears will not be sh shooting you because the infantry inside is hitting them with RPG. So it's basically a tank that the anti tank gears can't shoot to. That's pretty clever. Um... So yeah, actually, you know what? With your kind of hit and run style, what would you say is your regiment's favorite uh, kind of vehicle and uh, kind of weapon of choice as well? What's we'll uh, vehicle? Light, light tank in the tank category. Light tanks are is our favorites in hit and run tactics. The standard light tank, not the iron hide, because they're slow. Uh -huh. And uh, in general, combat vehicles, Spitfire and. Maybe we could say 30 millimeter SD, but we didn't use that too much. Yeah, so yeah, Spitfire and light tanks. Spitfire and, and silver light hand tanks. when we are doing front lines. For sure. So does your... Uh, I was going to ask if your regiment has any affiliates, subdivi subdivisions, or kind of subsidiaries, or is it part of any larger group? Uh, oh, no, we don't have any puppets. Yeah, how about like, the, say, uh, a part of any uh, groups of regiments, like say uh, the Warden Unity Hub? Do you? I don't know if you if you're part of that. Oh yeah, for yeah, I'm a uh, part of that. Some of the Blue Rosa and uh, we like we do co-op operations with KGG Seven Sal Thirteen and sometimes FFG. Those are the main regiments that we do operations with. Mm-hmm. Did you say, yeah. does, did you, does uh, the regiment have any official mottos or symbols or songs? I know the, the rose, the blue rose is, is uh, obviously the big one there, but any like mottos? Uh, well, we have been, we have been like acting on it since y you sent me the spreadsheet. I have been trying, do we really have a motto? I was asking around the officer chat. <laughs> we have two actually, we haven't chosen yet. Uh, so yeah, we have two right now, but we haven't chosen which one.
can, can we see the choice? Can, can you share the choices, or would you rather only reveal that when you've chosen? Uh, I'll, I'll reveal them later. Okay. Does your regiment have any traditions or anything you like to do, uh, like kind of quirks or uh, sayings or trademark, uh, you know, actions that you, you like doing out there on the battlefield? Yelling at infantry for being stupid, maybe. Oh, okay. And by infantry, I'm assuming you mean <laughs> friendly infantry. Yes, friendly infantry, generally. Because we aren't really lucky with the frontline people covering our tanks when one guy with a sticky versus five in friendly infantry with SMGs can't even hit on him. Okay, so a little, a little more aggressive than most. Yes. What would you say you think your regiment is known for? Vyatvik. Say again? Uh, Vyatvik. It's a relic base in Westgate. Hmm. So why is that like kind of we, a, your unofficial home? Yeah, it's our unofficial home. We basically do meme invasions, is that what we call. Mm -hmm. And practically it works better than anticipated because we don't do it as an, like, an, as an objective to capture the logistics up, but rather... As a tactic to get the QRF on us, so the other reg other people can do other stuff while we get the action on it. I, I just in case it needs to be said, in case Blue Roses wasn't uh, obvious enough, but uh, BR is a warden regiment. Yes. Yeah. So uh, doing the oh, oh, so you're saying that BR is uh, responsible for a lot of the, or at least claims responsibility for a lot of the failed invasions uh, on Wyattwick. We don't. Uh, we only failed one invasion so far, and that was the invasion of not West, uh, not Vietnam, but Cuba. That, that's the only naval landing that we failed. For, right, the, uh, the island that's uh, near Whitewick. In yeah, the handsome, yeah, handsome hideaway. Handsome hideaway. Thank you. Yes. Right. So okay. So only one failure. The others, that's all someone else memeing about. But all the all the successful yeah, ones, BR can claim. Yeah, we have never failed a Wyatt invasion. Sure, sure. Well, actually, you know what? Going off that, what do you think is the key to a good naval invasion? Uh, scouting, and getting the getting like the reaction of the QRF to see if they're uh, fast or slow. And how do you accomplish and then, that? Uh, well, we just send out two or one guy in a motorboat and just bino it out. And one more thing, we for the old accounts in our team, since like a lot of our invasions include like you cannot hide that many people brewing up for a fight. So we use misdirection tactics uh, in our own team, not the colonials, for mm. the alternative account that colonials have. Uh, we basically post a bunch of X's on the other markers on the uh, on our side of the map, like land here, land there, land there. But only the original regiment knows where we are going to land. So we confuse them. The alt, alt accounts, I mean. Well, I certainly feel bad for any... Uh solo player that wants to join in and it winds up at an empty <laughs> at an empty beach but uh yeah better yeah. safe than sorry i guess yeah no uh here's the thing we get the we get randoms but the fleet itself is like scattered around so even if we get random people it, the operation will not be caught well br so br considers operational security very very important in terms of how it conducts itself particularly for naval invasions yeah, so we basically scatter our fleet up in the, like different dockyards. So even if random people join, they cannot uh, see where we're going to land until it's too late. So operational security so, is a big part of BR's uh, yeah, that priority is. list. Yeah. So in your opinion, uh, just overall, what do you think is the key to success in Foxhole? Lots of scouting, lots of information, and uh, knowing what to do on exactly what situation. So actually, you know, t take that a bit further. In terms of the information game, uh, how how does BR do that? So d does BR always have someone on binoculars constantly looking at the map? Like so someone's main game is to just look at the map? 
Yes, yes, scouting. We have a we have two or three uh, scouts that like that their their main job is partisaning, but on invasions that we do, they're mostly like uh, scouting ahead to check mines, disable mines without getting seen, destroying watchtowers, being a nuisance to the enemy before we land. So I would assume uh, with all the scouting, a lot of communication would be taking place as well. Yes. Usually in the Discord, I'm assuming. Yep. I'm assuming, th and then those are probably safeguarded with all the with all the people uh, talking about, and a lot of screenshots, maybe of uh, of uh, of maps. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get all screenshots of the place that we're gonna hit, uh, and they're all sent to me, and not even the officer chat. So if not even the officers, but me, just me and my scouts know. And before one hour of the operation, I'll I'll give the briefing to the officers, and then they, after like uh, thirty minutes, then they give it to uh, the privates, like the low ranks of the clan. You know, in a typical war, how many naval and uh, amphibious assaults? How many amphibious assaults uh, would BR conduct in a typical war? Uh, can you hit it again? I could not hear even one. Yeah. Word of that. In a typical war, how many amphibious assaults does BR usually conduct? Minimum, well, minimally one, but sometimes we can't because there's not a lot of opportunity because there are uh, two reasons. It's because they are so expensive and time-consuming. And the second one is they get QRF'd so easily, so you need a lot of scouting, lots of information, and not to get QRF'd on those as well. You ever do you ever find yourself in a situation where the you're about to launch the the invasion but um you had to cancel it? Uh yeah, you did. And you as as a leader of a of a of a group of players, you're willing to you're willing to do that. You're willing to cancel the operation saying, "Hey, this is going to be a failure I, in my opinion based on the intelligence reports, based on the scouting." I'm going to call it off. I'm going to... We're going to yeah. do something else. Uh, we did that on Viatvik. You know why uh, I said that we never failed uh, of Viatvik operations? It's because we knew when to fall back and not waste those precious, uh, like, for example, armas that are tanks made of or lots of shirts, lots of guns. We are not willing to waste that on a 100% failed operation. So, for example, in, on one Viatvik invasion, the Q fucked us... And the main armor group that is that we have heavy armored cars that could destroy like everything, and we only had RPG guys and they were not really effective that much. So the mm. yeah the heavy armored cars couldn't arrive and we just called the invasion or fall back to the la the landing site and just got it the supplies back to our own stockpile. Well, hedging your bets and cutting your losses, I'm sure a lot of leaders can sympathize with that. Yeah, at the time we only lost time, really. No supplies were lost. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say your regiment's proudest foxhole moments are? Uh, well, I have three in mind. One of them is, uh, what you might call it? Uh, when you message me to do this, you know, you message the me to do the interview, right? To ask me if you could, inter if you could interview, mm -hmm. right? That exact day, uh, Blue Rose des destroyed the first Storm Cannon. Like, in the history of Blue Rose, we destroyed the first Storm Cannon that day. Oh, wow. With Congratulations. The where, where, yeah. was the, where was the Storm Cannon? It was in Lockmore, right by the... Uh, what was the lake of Lockmore called in the south? Uh, is it Widow's Whale? Yeah, I think it is. So it's it southeast is. of Market Road, southwest of Lockmore. It's that secondary kind of creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's like west of Royal Fort as well. West of Royal Fort. Say again. What is that last part? West of Royal Fort. Oh, west. Yes, west of Royal Fort. You know, it's funny. I can hear the. I can hear the. You're, you're pronouncing your W's as V's. I can hear the kind of the Germanic or Austrian uh, in it. Oh, no, it's uh, Turkish. 
Turkish. Oh, okay. Tur- no, I, I, I don't. I didn't get what you said on that. That's okay. So, uh, d- destroying your first storm cannon. How, how did you? How did you go about doing? Uh, how did you go about doing that? Was it naval? Was it through naval or was it land? Uh, so here's what we did. We kind of did a unorthodox and went against our base because we had an expend and like uh, we had help from other clans, so our manpower was like tripled in numbers. Hmm. So we did an unorthodox method that uh, didn't really go up with our, with our uh, vase in blue row. So, but yeah, you know, we don't do that, but we know how to do it. That's what uh, what is. We got nine barges, uh, and at that time we had chieftains, the new tanks that had right. two hundred and fifty millimeters. We got nine of them, and there was uh, a weak point that. If you destroyed one line of concrete defenses from the sea, you could reach the storm cannon right there and kill it right there. So, we set up, we sailed up, and uh, here's where the scouting comes in. We scouted it for exactly two hours. For two hours, we tested its QRF, we tested, we checked who's, the, the, who's bunker base or clans was it, we checked the reaction time of the QRF, Mm-hmm. And we checked for anti-tank mines on the beach or barbed wire. We destroyed nearly all of the watchtowers. And then after they came to build the watchtowers, we killed them, killed them over and over again to the like to the point that they didn't even bother getting watchtowers up there. So take, because it wasn't on the road. Like they were just right. uh, fuck Yeah, they just disregarded it. And then we strike at night time because uh at the time, there was lots of enemies on the front line itself of Lockmore. Like, it was a front line, but the front line was away, and the enemy had no field field uh, FATs, high-velocity field FATs. I did, we did not see. They had two EATs, but we took care of them with the first line of defense. And then, uh, we got out of ammo. We were out of ammo in the Silver Hands. The Storm Cannon was not dead, but one silver hand did not like it was it had one ammo but it was tracked so it could not make it to the storm like storm cannon firing range right mm-hmm. so at that critical moment in like 30 seconds one of us uh got the 250 out of the silver hand pu- and put it in my silver hand huh. and then we shot the last in, and yeah and we shot the last 250 and it was dead that's awesome uh, just bum rushing barges. It seemed to work. Where did you Where yeah, did you launch from? Work. Where did you launch from? Mercy's Wish. Mercy's Wish. Yeah, we, yeah, we launched from Mercy's Wish. And no one, none of the colonials from across the lock, they they saw that. No. Wow. We had a naval force that. Yeah, we had a naval force that. Did, uh, we had a naval force like one infantry field barge, and also Lockmore was in our control at the time. Mm-hmm. Like no, no the but FAMO. FAMO was in our control, so they could not come to it. Wow, well, that's certainly the the your first storm cannon kill. That is certainly something to be to be proud of. Do you know what? Do you know offhand uh, who was operating that storm cannon? Not specifically, but like the I regiment? have. Oh no, I have no idea. Actually, we yeah. we met like we did got their information for two hours, but. There was no signs anywhere. There was no like specific people that sure. crafted. On I only saw randos and high ranking like high ranking people generally crafted, but I didn't see any clan tags. Mm-hmm. Do you know what that? And at the time, I, I suppose like I first and I thought uh, like uh, I thought it was the Chinese because at the time we did the operation, the China was in like th- four or three a.m., so they could not cure of it. That's what I uh, switch like. Uh, Got in me, but apparently that wasn't the case. It was a uh, European guys. Hmm. European. Do you know what that storm cannon was firing on? Uh, FAMO itself, a critical target. Yeah, that sounds about right for that position. Yeah, that's astounding. Well, congratulations on your first storm cannon kill. Thank you. The second one was a giant tank battle, mm-hmm. and uh. We destroyed 30 tanks without losing a single one in a what? battle of... Where was it? Lock I almost War. don't believe you. Where, where was this? No. What? Where, where was Lockmore. this? It was in Lockmore as well. Lockmore as well. That was in Lockmore. Oh, as well. wow. A lot of success in Lockmore. 
Well, no, the battle itself like took like in, not at the same time, but it was like in the uh, like there was a fifteen minute interval because the colonials got new tanks after we destroyed the first mm. uh, twenty or thirty. Or, I mean, uh, fifteen. Right. So, uh, so you had armor of your own. Yeah. And that was your primary anti-tank um, method. So, what was this? What position were you holding? We weren't holding. We were uh, actually uh, assaulting. Ah, so okay. So this is one of your. We were, yeah. Yeah, we were invading from a Farnak coast. We got a bunker base up to Lockmore, and then at the top of the first, there was the bunker base. By the way, keep in mind that battle tanks were still a thing, mm. at that time. Right. Uh, two of the kill, three of the kills was battle tanks. Wow. So were they parked or were they engaged? They they were engaged. They were active. So keep in mind that wait, did I say that the the battle tanks were here? Yes. Oh uh, yeah, there was uh, five or so battle tanks. Those this was destroyed on the enemy side, and mm -hmm. then the funny thing is, uh, they charged us first. We were on um like we were outnumbered physically. Like uh, we had, let me uh, remember, we had like five or six tanks and they had 10 tanks like they had nine uh lts and in the first engagement they had nine lts right and then two battle tanks they had one bt and five lts i have absolutely no idea how we survive or win that won that without a single of one of us dying was there was it, it a, was it an open field was it an open field it was an open field, and the enemy light tanks didn't even try to flank us. In Did they come one at tank. a time? They, they had to have come one at a time or something. They No, they didn't. Wow. Uh, but I assume that when I was in the tank with my binos, I saw they, f uh, for some reason, some of them retreat, retreated because of the their battle tank died first, and I think it was a morale break or like a morale shock. Sure. When the battle tank died, the other light tanks dissipated. But then, after I uh, looked behind us, uh, there was three friendly battle tanks coming, so that's why they were falling back. And then, uh, yeah, we mopped up the rest of the LTs. In the second battle, in the upcoming battle, the second upcoming battle, it was in the fields of the... Like, we got Tomato to first, but lost the foothold of the first bunker base, so but it wasn't any like it wasn't critical at all because now we control Tom of the First and Mercy's Wish, we still got our supply line up and we got the fences up. And the second half of the battle, they got more uh battle tanks and more light tanks. They none of the sides focused on infantry. Like at the time the only anti tank infantry weapon was the RPG and the anti tank rifle, both sides had them. Uh, none of the sides had real infantry. None of it. All, like, wardens and colonials at that time were all using tanks. It was a giant tank battle. Basically. And then, uh, same thing happened with this battle. And then the same thing in the third battle as well. There was nothing changed. They just charged us. We killed, charged and killed. I have no idea why. I don't know if it was desperation or just pure suicidalness they just keep charging on us and keep dying wow well i guess uh keeping together and holding the line there's some there's some credence to that not running at the first sign of trouble you know it's funny you you, you called yourself a kind of a hit and run regiment but you seem to be able to hold the front line quite nicely from what you've told me is there any uh is there any uh video of this i'd, lo I'd love to i'd love to see it yes actually uh there is indeed a video from the enemy himself. All right, so so yeah, I, uh, I'll put this in post later. Uh, but this video that's uh, on the screen here, um, this is uh, this is from the colonial perspective in, of engaging you. Yes. And it looks it looks like there's a couple of regiments here from the colonial perspective, including Pars, CRG, TAW, Raid. So it looks like. Uh, if what you say is true, you gave a couple of colonial regiments a good a good drubbing that day. Yeah, that was a proud moment. Ha, huh, interesting. 
Okay. Well, uh, you know, uh, speaking of regi of other regiments, particularly on the warden side here, are there any regiments? I, can you hear me? Can I say one more thing? Yes. Yeah, can go I ahead. say one more thing about the success? Mm -hmm. when, the, uh, when the Blue Rose was first uh, created, our first operation included three health tracks. When the health tracks were still be able to like uh, kill structures all kinds, uh, we started off with. Three health tracks, and we ended up with eleven because the enemy captured health tracks. Huh. So you were you were running yeah. around with a bunch of um. We ended bunch. up more. Yeah, we ended up with more colonial uh, health tracks than more than once. I secretly kind of hate that, and not so much that yeah, uh, just just the fact that you can a majority of your equipment can be captured from the from the enemy, and then you're just running that. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I have opinions yeah. on that. Uh, but that hey, good work. That that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, so uh, you know, speaking of other regiments, there, um, what would you say is a regiment, or what regiments do you like working with, and on the warden side? So Seven Sow is an amazing regiment that we work with. They're really successful and really helpful on most things. Seven who? KGG as well. Seven Sow. Seven Sow. Ah. Yeah, and then the KGG is a good help. Also, the 13th and Warden Vanguard are, are they are all awesome people. With the rest, and and I have no like I didn't do much operations with the rest, but ETA helped us with that storm cannon thing. So yeah, that's a lot of European regiments, European based regiments you're, you're mentioning. So it's it's good to see that that, yeah. that time zone is. Is uh, is very much alive and well as it always. And in fact, in some by some metrics, it probably has more than North Americans, uh, more more operating members than North Americans, to be honest. Uh, but that's that's good to hear. Um, is so? Is there anywhere on the map your regiment would call home? I know you said Wyattwick was a target that you often liked invading, but how about how about home in the in the north? Uh, look more, I would say. So 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 you're like, you're. you're you're choosing a colonial, uh, an often held colonial starting region as a, as a place yeah. for you call home. Because that's where that's where the best partisan operations and tank operations happen. Because there is like so many open space for tank operation, and there is the only three roads that leads to the after like capturing Tom of first. There's like only three roll roads that you can get logistics through, and it's absolutely so fun hitting those. You know, particularly with the trench system uh, now in place, uh, you know, despite needing plenty of uh, work on it, but just having that that system, it, I've come to appreciate open fields, wide open fields with plenty of flank opportunity to be a very fun place to fight in. Yeah. So what's the one thing, the one thing you could change, add, or remove to Foxhole if you had the chance? Maybe add more early game tools or like uh, relic tanks, like small and not so much HP relic tanks in the uh, early game. Like just armored vehicles in general and removal of the walls and pillars in Brody Town. Yes, yeah, all the, all the small chest high walls that you can't destroy and all actually yes, yeah I, I know what you're talking about all around the refinery and the one around that factory oh that's horrible i'm, I'm all for switching things up to make sure cities don't look like carbon copies from one another but uh having a functional space or being being able yeah. to change that functional space is very nice or would be very nice yeah for sure. So then, uh, what's what what's something that you appreciate? What do you appreciate the most about Foxhole, in your opinion? The fact that everyone is a soldier rather than the soldier in the game. Yeah, you like, got that sense no, of scale. And no, no, no one, no one is the main character. Everyone is working together to a common goal. I like that. No main character syndrome yeah. there. Everyone's the main character in their own story, but there's the wider Foxhole war to think about. And there's, yeah. there's certainly people that stick out, and, but uh, it's humbling. Yeah, and then the one more thing that I appreciate is one if one man can change the world, or re can even change the a region, like an entire region's fate. Hmm. One guy. 
You know, it's funny. Those two things you said, they seem contradictory, but they're actually beautiful when blended together, which is, uh, yes, you are insignificant, but at the same time, you can, your actions can quickly have incredible significance if you play your, if, for a combination yeah. of, of luck and also, uh, you know, uh, taking the right choices. So it's, it's, it, that, that, that's the beauty of the sandbox, isn't it? Who can people contact or where can people go if they want to join the Blue Roses? Uh, Discord, the Foxtel official Discord. Yeah, are you open to uh, any requirements on, on joining? No. Even if you're low rank or nobody that... Even if you haven't started the game, think of starting, everyone can join. Well, uh, Noir of the Blue Roses Regiment, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, duly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for giving me this uh, time to do make an interview. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's good to hear from you. I, I don't usually have the luxury of uh, uh, of being available when the you know the European uh, active hours are. So uh, hearing these stories, at least so far from the warden side, is is very welcome. So uh, Noir of the Blue Roses, thank you so much for your time. Yep, thank you as well. Well, for the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings. Good night and good fight. The Press Corps is a non-profit creative collective of artists, reporters, and players from the MMO video game Foxhole by Siege Camp. Our mission is to engross our audience in and amplify the stories of this unique war ecosystem. The Press Corps was founded in early 2018 by former Planetside 2 Radio Free Araxis host Captain in Arms. It is a separate community entity and is in no way representative of Siege Camp. For more information, visit the Press Corps Discord through the link below.